G'day, I'm Melissa Shannon, founder of Digital Scrapbooking HQ.com, and today I'm here with you in Photoshop Elements 2021 for our ABCs of PSE. In this series, you are going to be learning about each tool in the Photoshop Elements toolbox. Today's letter is the letter B. B for the brush tool. So the brush tool is a great tool in Photoshop Elements and, you know, Photoshop. And most of what you learn here, you can also apply to Photoshop. So here we have our brush tool. Our brush tool has a couple of sub tools, which we'll cover um, the color replacement tool and the impressionist brush tool. So as we click on our page, we can brush with a mouse or in my case, a pen tablet. It works exactly the same. You just hold the mouse button down and then release when you finished brushing. The brush tool is a what we call a destructive edit. That means that anything you change um, will be on the currently selected layer. So we have now on the background these spots. However, if you wanna create a new layer, you can draw on the layer above. And that's a non-destructive way of using the brush tool. I can turn it on and off later. So there's several options for our brush tool. You can um, change the kind of brush. You can change the size of the brush. You can change the opacity of your brush. So it's semi-transparent. As you go over and over again, it eventually makes it opaque. And you can change some settings, such as fade, which, you know, fades the brush out as you brush with it. The hue jitter, which just kind of changes up the, um, let's turn off that fade again. Um, that just changes the color. Um, in this case, it's black, so it's just shades of gray. We've got the spacing of the brush. So if we space it out, you can see almost individual stamps rather than just one uh, brush stroke. Hardness, if we reduce the hardness, you'll see that the edges are a bit softer. Let's turn the opacity up here. You can see those edges are a lot softer and roundness makes the brush more or less elliptical. So if you're wanting a calligraphy type effect, let's give ourselves a clean sheet of paper here. So if we change this brush to reduce its roundness. That will keep it at fully hard. Let's move it. Now it gives the effect of a flat brush. So that is just the quickest of overviews of the brush settings and of course you can set this as the default. Now if you do happen to be using a tablet you can use the pen to control the scatter, roundness, hue, um, size and opacity. So you can choose different options depending on how hard you press on your tablet as well. And then we have the airbrush mode which is much the same as the uh, brush but it just gives you a softer finish. It's easier to see if we actually choose a color. So let's do that. You can see some lightness as we move around. You see the inconsistency of the brush there as it would be with airbrushing. All of these are the very basic uses of the brush tool, but you can also use different kinds of brushes to get different effects. For example, the confetti brush, which uses the hue jitter and other settings to make it look like confetti, depending on how hard I hold down my brush as well. We have scales. Do it larger so you can see it. Use this to, you know, paint scales on a fish and other fun effects.
You can also load custom brushes using the load brushes command. And I'm going to use some brushes from my favorite, one of my favorite designers, uh, Katie the Creative Lady. And these brushes are really quite different. She has a some word art as a brush. Now you wouldn't usually use a brush like that as a brush to draw. You just tap it once to basically stamp it on your, your layout. So the brush tool can of course be used in um, photos as well. Let's go back to a pretty standard default brush. And we might use the brush tool to do some retouching. For example, we might want to get rid of a spot. So we might use the eyedropper tool to select the color and then just use a little brush to do some retouching on our photos. We might want to, for example, a few strokes to make it look like his hair, his hair is there. For example, we might use this darker color, select that color, switch back to the brush tool and just, so we might use our brush tool and we might greatly decrease the opacity and make it like one pixel and just do some little hairs because his hair is very overblown there. Now look, would I ever correct this? No, but I'm just showing you an example of um, how you might use your brush tool in photo retouching work. And you can see zoomed out, he has more texture now in his hair. I would probably even reduce the opacity even further just to give him a bit more definition in his hair. So while we're here, let's have a look at the Impressionist brush tool. Um, and that uses the colors and um, shapes in the background to create an Impressionist style image. So let's see how it goes with these rocks here and end up with a bit of an Impressionist look in the background here. And if you reduce the size of your brush, it will uh, do more detail. So, you know, with this size, we're losing most of the detail of the flowers. But if I reduce the size of my brush, you'll see that we're retaining more detail as I go over this. For the Impressionist brush tool, we also have all the usual suspects in the tool options bar, such as the opacity, size, mode, and then you can use the advanced button to um, change the brush settings. So you can try some different brush styles. Let's, let's zoom in on this flower over here and show you the different motions. So we can use like, this is dabbing and this is a tight curl. You can see tight, short motion. So you would just choose whatever makes most sense for the picture you're trying to turn into a piece of impressionist art. And you'll notice that I've actually created a new layer um, before I started working, because as I mentioned before, when you use the uh, brush tool, it is, destructive so it actually changes the pixels on the currently selected layer. And then finally we have our color replacement tool. Um, again it has size options, it has tolerance. Tolerance is um, how related the colors need to be. I think a good example is this say this red jacket if we wanted to change the color of that one to make it something more muted say maybe a nice brown I don't know why you would because that jacket is stunning, <laughs> but just for the purposes of this example, uh, we're going to choose how similar the colors have to be to actually change. And we'll zoom in a bit. We'll just paint brown on this red jacket. It's actually working pretty well. And anywhere you click, that is where the start of the color um, changing will be. So if I click here, and then I go over Matthew's ear, it's not gonna change the color of his ear because it's too far away from the red. So I'll just continue to paint over until I'm happy with how that looks. You can see original. And obviously if you were doing a professional job, you would zoom in and make sure all of that red is replaced. So that's a color replacement tool. And so another thing you can do with the color replacement tool would be to, for example, change the color of these tulips to say bright yellow. You would just choose your new yellow color and you'll paint over 
all of the pink flowers. It can be time consuming, but just to show you how, you know, easy it is to Photoshop things, as they say in the biz. So there you have it. We have um, an overview of how to use your brush tool for art work and for stamping images with brushes. We've showed you how to use the impressionist brush tool to get a painterly look on your photographs and how to use the colour replacement brush to replace colours in your photographs. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified of the next video in the series. To make sure you don't miss out, you can subscribe to my email list and you'll receive my free printable shortcut cards as well as notifications of all the videos in the upcoming series. If you'd like to learn more about Photoshop Elements or digital scrapbooking, head to digitalscrapbookinghq.com.